Hi, I'm Amber Jakeman and I love to write feel-good fiction with uplifting endings. I'm going to read to you from my House of Jewels series. These are uh, international heart warmers. Um, they follow the romantic fortunes of the extended Huntley family who are jewellers. So, from the beginning of House of Diamonds, Stella pushed the hair out of her eyes, stepped back and surveyed her stool, satisfaction surging through her. She'd done it. It was real. Here beside a small street tree in the Oxford Street Mall in Sydney's Bondi Junction, her stool was ablaze with her unique jewellery, each piece a product of her imagination and hard-working fingers, and each piece in its place. In the mild spring morning, the aroma of coffee wafted, mixing with the din of traffic and snippets of conversation in many languages. Stella pulled out her phone to record the moment, to send it to Jeannie to post on her new business's Facebook and Instagram. As she snapped, a tall man in a distinguished pale grey suit sprinted out of the closest building towards her. The cut of his suit was perfect, the lapels open slightly to show a shirt the same blue as his eyes. Striking. Her first customer? No, he surveyed them all like he owned the place. Frowning, he fixed her with his gaze, making her heart jump. We need you to move about 20 metres up that way if you wouldn't mind, he said. Smooth. What? Move? Why would she move? She'd only just finished setting up. It had taken a month to prepare and so much time just that morning, arranging her earrings and bracelets. What on earth could he mean? Just for a short time, thank you, he said. Her hackles rose. However handsome he might be, and he was handsome with that sun-kissed brown hair and that way of smiling just on one side, as if life was a bit of a joke as long as he was in control, he had no right to push her around. Actually, Mr. Huntley, James Huntley, he tipped his head back a little, indicating his connection with the three-storey building behind him, and she turned and read the ornate sign, Huntley's House of Diamonds. Stella sighed. She didn't reconfigure her whole life, resigning and moving here from Perth on the other side of the country, only to fall into the trap of obeying the next handsome man. No, she'd been there and done that for too long. She'd been totally, pathetically, at the mercy of her boss Damien's demands. Obeying handsome men was a bad habit she'd finally kicked, hadn't she? This new Stella was strong and independent, she reminded herself. Stella now worked for herself, trusted only herself, and obeyed only herself, and she would no longer be told what to do by men who assumed she would comply. So whatever this man wanted, and however attractive he might be, and he was quite attractive, every bit as good-looking as Damien, his hair more fair and with a bit of a wave at the front, and those eyes, intense. She knew she had every right to stand her ground, and she would. So she does. And she said, look, I thought I'd made myself clear, James. I do mind, and so I won't move. And this time her tone was pure ice, each word clearly articulated. James conveyed his, conveyed his astonishment mildly with raised eyebrows and a slight shrug. She stared back, arms crossed. If it was a standoff, his stance wasn't entirely hostile. Amused? A flicker of interest? Frustrated? Was there a flash of challenge? Admiration, even? He wasn't like Damien, always controlling. James was sizing her up, those blue eyes drilling into her own. Abruptly, he looked towards the street where a cavalcade came into view and then answered his phone. Nicole, what's that? Running early? He turned away, ignoring Stella. His sudden indifference to her felt like a dismissal. 
a loss even. At any other time, she would have found this man interesting. Had there been something else behind the arrogance? A kind of decency? Her heart still raced. Defiance had never come easily for her. But there was work to do, and she served her first customers, delighted to wrap each purchase in her tissue paper, covered with stars. Suddenly, at the curb, a grey Rolls Royce pulled up. James strode towards it, swinging open the rear passenger door. An elegant woman appeared, statuesque in a tight green satin dress, and James offered her his arm. They made a striking pair, she so willowy and he so handsome. He escorted her right into the mall, right through the throng, towards his house of diamonds. Antoinette! Heist! the crowd called, pressing towards them, posing for selfies. Now Stella remembered where she'd seen the woman's face. It was on billboards and buses all over town. This was Antoinette Lacey, the star of the new film Heist, featuring the theft of a necklace of priceless diamonds. Stella's stall was directly between the car and Huntley's. Antoinette and James oozed glamour as they strode along the mall. Her languid arm draped through his. James could be a movie star too, Stella thought. What a stunt! Fancy hooking a VIP like Antoinette Lacey for your celebrity endorsement. She'd just won a string of awards. James Huntley had a few connections, all right. No wonder he wanted her to move. They were walking towards his store. But her stall was right in the way. Her heart kicked up another notch. Exciting. Stella was as intrigued as the rest of the crowd, their mobile phones up like antennae. The young and the older, curious business people grabbing a coffee, retirees at the edges, and a few others with shopping bags, strollers and toddlers. Two big men in black suits hovered, speaking into their earpieces. More reporters and media cameras appeared from nowhere and surged into action, all bent on capturing the smiles and actions of the rich and famous. Directly before her stall, at the centre of the commotion, James and Antoinette paused. James extracted his arm and reached inside his suit coat. He pulled from his breast pocket something glittering like fire in the bright sunshine. It was the delectable diamond necklace featured in the film. All eyes upon them. James held it high for the cameras and then dribbled it, diamond by diamond, into Antoinette's elegant hand as cameras whirred, clicked and binged. It was PR genius. But there was a problem. No, no, James, not there, here. A frazzled woman in a tight mustard suit arrived and tried to encourage the photographers and videographers to take the shot again. With Huntley's in the background. Suddenly, a camera operator backed into Stella's stall, locking her trays of necklaces and pendant earrings which danced like miniature disco balls, dazzling the crowd. Nicole tried to intervene, too late. Antoinette Lacey halted her leggy stride right there at Stella's stall. And suddenly, showing a deep interest, fingering her display of huge faux emerald drop earrings. They were eye-catching, suspended with shiny wire, secured with one of Stella's characteristic Celtic knots. As they tumbled in, inside their tiny silvery cage, they shot out flashes of reflected sunlight, and the camera shutters clamoured in staccato. Please, take these! Stella jerked herself into action. It was PR gold right here at her humble store. In a dream, she unpinned the dazzling pair that perfectly matched the green of Antoinette's satin sheet dress. As Stella handed them across, the star held them up for the cameras, which clicked again as Antoinette unleashed that famous winning movie star smile. James froze, the priceless diamond necklace dangling from his outstretched hand, ignored. This way, Miss Lacey, a furious Nicole hissed, firmly pulling Antoinette around Stella's little stall towards Huntley's. 
Our other VIPs are dying to meet you, Miss Lazy. Inside, please. Media, this way. Nicole's call was as strained as her voice as she tried to usher reporters inside with the star. Champagne's on the third floor. Invitation only. The media and best-dressed members of the crowd followed them, but more and more people stopped at Stella's stall, buying the same earrings that Antoinette had admired. So her dream was coming true. And the customers just kept coming, spurred on by Antoinette's star power, clustering, clamouring, all wanting Stella jewellery. Only one person seemed unimpressed. Stella glanced up from her customers to meet James's icy stare. His eyes flashed fury right into hers. He turned on one heel and followed Antoinette and Nicole into his building. The sun 